how is everybody? Today we are going to do a demo on doing a hot dog burrito inverted tube. Oh, uh, what are all the other words I have heard this technique called? I always call it a hot dog pillowcase because it looks like a hot dog. But these are the pillowcases that we're talking about. This one I've taken home so it already has cat hair on it. I love Alexander Henry fabric for pillowcases because you have this giant, amazing print that you can't necessarily figure out what to do with on a quilt, but they're perfect for pillowcases because you almost always get the whole repeat in one side or the other of the pillowcase. And I know that you guys have probably made hot dog pillowcases before, but I'm going to show you a couple of tips to get some better results like things that I always didn't like when I made them I'm going to show you how to work around those what you need is three quarters of a yard a third of a yard for your two main prints and a two inch strip First thing we're going to do is we're going to take our two inch strip and press it in half So we've got this nice, clean, crisp piece, okay? Next, we're gonna come back over to the cutting table. And this is where everybody goes, huh, when we make these. This is our cuff piece. And I don't cut the selvages off until, there's a step where I cut the selvages off. We put our little accent piece right on the top of the cuff piece. We'll line the rest of that up in a second. Then we're going to take our, the body of our um, pillowcase. This isn't really directional because the tulips go up and down, so it doesn't really matter. If you're weird about the direction things are going to go, pay attention when you pick the fabric out. We have right sides together of the cuff, the accent piece, and the body of the pillowcase. I'm clipping them together with Wonder Clips. They're not going to stay there that long. But here's another tip. Make sure that all of your fabric, the edges of all of your fabrics, line up perfectly. You don't want to miss any of the seams. Because then your pillowcase won't stay together when it gets washed. So... We have all of our pieces put together. So now you have a little um, accent piece sandwich between your cuff and your pillowcase. We're gonna take the body of the pillowcase, this is the hot dog part, and we're gonna roll it up. You wanna make sure that you roll it so that it's out of the way of your needle. If you're really nervous about that, Get it to about right here and then put a, you know, put a pin on this end and a pin on that end. If you get it laid out on a big surface, it's not usually a problem. Then you're going to take the cuff and you're going to make it, you're going to just make this whole big, now we're going to call it a bun. Because here's your bun and here's your hot dog. I just put the clips on for now to hold it. Then I'm going to take my pins. I pin backwards to the way most people do. Most people will take a pin and put it in like this. The reason for that is they want to be able to pull it out as they sew. I don't do that either. Because the pin is put there with the intention of holding it while you're sewing. If you pull it out as you get there, if it's not so much on this, but on things that you're trying to be really detailed with. Now the pin has stopped doing its thing right before it really needs to be doing its thing. So I leave the clips on so that I can just put a couple of pins between each clip. All right. 
So now we have our hot dog ready to go. I'm going to take these clips out because we don't need them anymore. And we're going to go back to the sewing machine. You want to do a quarter inch seam allowance on this. You don't have to do a scant quarter inch on this one because you really do want it to be, you want to make sure that you catch everything. Um, this one, and I go ahead and backstitch at the beginning because you're going to kind of tug on it when you, when you pull it right way out. Since it's a hot dog, we're going to grab the piece that's the hot dog, not the bun. So the body of your pillowcase. And you're just going to invert it. Now what you have is a cuff on your pillowcase where the seams are all encased. I will press it from the inside of the case first. So from the back, and I'll tell you why, because it's not gonna be straight on both sides. And I would rather make the front part that you're gonna see really straight after the fact. So if it's going to press some weirdness into it, let it do it from the, you know, from this side so that when you go back to the front, you can easily press it out. So now what I do is I take and I actually push the cuff up from the accent piece and press it because I don't want any folds in there. I'm gonna take it and fold it wrong sides together. We're also gonna learn how to do French seams today. French seams are really popular in clothing because it makes your clothing last longer. Um, we don't typically do them in quilting and you don't typically do them when you're just making a pillowcase, but it really does make it last longer. So I'm just gonna take and fold them wrong sides together, okay? Then I'm going to take to my mat here and I'm gonna fold my, my pillowcase in half. This is just to trim off the selvages. So I've got everything folded. I'm gonna take my, I'm just gonna take my ruler and trim off the, a, a healthy trimming of the selvage because I wanna make sure I'm getting rid of all the selvage. So if you fold the selvages back, you can see the words on everything. You wanna make sure that when you cut into it, you don't have any of the selvage pieces left, okay? When you're cutting this, you also want to make sure that your ruler line lines up to the fold of your pillowcase right here, okay? So I'm lining up to this fold, this fold is straight, and then I'm just going to cut this all off. I've got these already put wrong sides together. Since we're going to do a French seam, that's important. You want to pay attention to the fact that this fold lines up over here so you don't have a weird seam on the side. Now here is a tip on French seams. You want to make sure that your seam allowance on the first go is smaller than your seam allowance on the second go. However you get that on your machine is your business. What I do is I leave my needle in the middle position. I'll put my needle down. And then I'm using the inside of my J foot here as my reference point. So here's the inside of that plastic bit. I'm gonna use that as my reference point. And then we're just gonna sew all the way down the side. So when you get here, you can sew off the end or not. And I'm just going to turn. Right. Let's 
episode of Ottawa. So we're going to poke the corners out on this one. I like my, um, my metal precision tip turner for this. This isn't a super fine point that we're trying to get. So now here is where things get somewhat time consuming. I know this seems tedious. This step seems tedious, but it really does make a difference. And since we only stitched two seams, we're going to press this out. Um, here's a tip. And I always think of Ferris Bueller when I do this, but if you lick your fingers and then roll the seam, so I will just press a little bit and then you want to just continually roll this hem out. It does help if you use your point turner ahead of time and press the seams out. When you get to the point where the accent piece is, there's a lot of fabric right there. So you want to roll that seam out the best you can and you're probably going to want to hit it with a little bit of steam because there's so many layers. So now I'm going to take my foot and I'm going to use the outside of my J foot. See where my needle is? I'm pretty far out from it. But just to be safe and just to assume that I didn't press, I didn't stitch everything perfectly straight, I'm going to bump my needle over a little bit. So it was in the center position. I'm going to move it over about a millimeter and a half. You want to stay stitched this beginning. And then we're going to stay stitched this corner too. Well, we're going to try to. We're just going to tie that off. But when you turn it right way out, and you can repress it if you want to, if you want to make it look really nice for before you give it away. Now you have a really fancy pillowcase. Yay! Couple of things that you're gonna want. You're gonna want clover clips. You're gonna want long pins that you can sew over. You'll notice that when I sewed my initial seam, I didn't pull my pins out. I don't fly over them either because that's a good way to mess some stuff up. But if you use a long, thin pin, then you can sew over them. That's why I put the heads the way that I do so that they stay facing out and I can sew over them. Okay. Um, a point turner is really helpful. I like the point to point turner and I like the precision um, turner tool. The point to point turner is nice because you can put it inside and you can push all those seams out. Um, let's see, an iron. A long enough ruler that when you fold your pillow pillowcase in half, you can trim the side off. I was using a 24 inch ruler. You could probably get away with an 18. Um, and then remember you need three quarters of a yard, a third of a yard and an accent piece. 